Jai Gurudev everyone to this new episode of Guru Siyang Yog Bliss Becoming and Being and today is part 33 and I have with me my co-host for the day Manju Chhabra. Jai Gurudev. Yeah so in these sessions for past few episodes we have been uh, discuss uh, we have been discussing some frequently asked questions by beginners and and even practitioners for that matter and let's just start right now what do you say manju shall i start yeah uh, so uh, Gorima, that's a, uh, i think it's a great discussion which we are having about you know the questions which uh, you know the new i would say sadhaks or people who want to practice or who have just started a recent practice of Guru Syag meditation, they might be having in their mind and uh, they want to ask. Uh, so we are here to just uh, you know discuss and uh, read out to them. And we are uh, reading out these FAQs from the website, uh, which is gurusyagyog.org and you can also go and have a look at it but however because we are discussing and also sharing our and some other sadhaks experience during our discussion so i'm sure it would be you know making more uh, experiential for uh, all of you so uh, yeah definitely we can go ahead but uh, how about just sharing a bit about guru uh process with them uh, how about yeah that? why not yeah. So, those of you who are maybe joining this session for the first time and don't know much, so on the left side we have our beloved Guru, Guru Ram Lalji Siyag, and on the right side is Guru of our Guru, Babaji Sri Gangai Nadji. So, pranam to both of them, and our uh, we would like to take their ashirwad going forward in this session. And yes, so uh, as Manju rightly said that the basics of the Guru's uh, Yag Yog are very important to understand because everything lies in the basics only. And uh, basics means that as part of this yog, we have to do only two things. Yeah, Manju, you tell now. Yeah, and uh, Gorima, you know, here um, I believe it's a very important uh, thing uh, to know about the process because I am going to share my experience. So I heard about this process many times, many, many times. But there was an element which was always left out. Or I would say differently here that there was an element which got added whenever I used to hear someone describing this process. So I believe yeah. when we say basics, yes, and the repetition really uh, plays an important part and hence we just thought here to discuss the process a very simple process once again and we'll be doing it often going forward so yes uh, now uh, Guru Syak, uh is I mean I'm talking about uh, Gurudev Gurudev Ram Lalji Syak, uh is an enlightened Indian spiritual master and uh, you know, he gifted us a very simple process of meditation. And, um, you know, he gave us a process uh, with which we can awaken our uh, divine power, which would lead us to have a happy, healthy, peaceful, transformative life, you know. And, uh, and what is the process? The process is one, First is the mental chanting of mantra and the mantra we will be displaying towards the end of our session. And uh, the mantra has to be first heard in Gurudev's voice. That's mandatory. Me or any other sadha cannot uh, you know, tell us in our own words because the divine power will only be transferred from Gurudev's voice into us. And that is only possible when we listen to it in Gurudev's voice. So uh, the mental chanting of mantra 
during meditation you know um and yeah so one is mental chanting of mantra and the other is meditation so what is mental chanting we mean chanting of that mantra without producing any sound without moving our lips or without moving our tongue and we have to continuously keep on repeating in our mind so since that mantra is enlightened by gurudev and so this mantra has lot of power and gurudev in his speeches when you listen to them he said that's the key and that is really the key so non stop chanting of mantra is uh, i mean would lead you to the real human transformation that is one number two is doing meditation that is in the morning and in the evening for 15 minutes each so that is these are the two things which gurudev said we have to do non stop mental chanting of mantra and the other thing is doing meditation twice a day for 15 minutes so in hot uh, places like hot uh, with hot temperature you can do 15 minutes and in cold places you can do it up till 30 minutes yeah so that is the thing and the only one uh, thing which gurudev said is that uh, when you do meditation we should be empty stomach so if you've had food lunch dinner breakfast you need to wait for 2 to 3 hours at least before you start doing meditation but you can do mantra jap any time any time he said while you've not even taken bath you know or whatever you're doing even if you're in the bathroom you can still chant the mantra i mean there are no restrictions howsoever for uh, you know a reciting mantra uh, or i would say chanting mantra and for uh, meditation gurudev said ladies can do it any time of the month there is no restriction on it there are no restrictions as to if you have to face in a particular direction or you have to wear particular clothes or you have to kind of only after you take bath you can do it there are no such restrictions so that's uh, precisely a small uh, i wanted to share you know here that Uh, the method of meditation so you will have to uh, look at gurudev's picture and uh, you know just look at it with lot of reverence for a minute and uh, place his uh, picture on the third eye and then close your eyes and kind of just uh, kind of pray to gurudev that allow me 15 minutes of meditation and then start chanting the mantra in your mind and you will be astonished to see that after 15 minutes your eyes will open and during that meditation you might go through some yogic kriyas which we discussed in our earlier session where there was a question that uh, you know what if something like this happens and is it uh, does it happen to everyone no it doesn't happen to everyone depending on what needs to happen in our body our kundalini shakti will decide which is the supreme power will decide what is right for our body in order to be free from mental physical or spiritual disease and depending on that a particular kriya will happen no kriya will can be physical movement or can be you know some sensation can be some uh, experience like uh, some people just get yawn or tears you know very subtle movements and some people may not experience any movements so depending on what our body or what our mind or what our uh, you know whatever is required for us to get healed so it will happen on its own so yeah this is pretty much what i can recall gorma you would like to add something to it yeah so to put it simply we have to chant the mantra around the clock that means as much as you can so while doing mundane chores in your house or uh, it depends upon you many a times we are just traveling sitting in the uber so that's kind of a perfect time to chant the mantra and uh, meditation of course you have to do twice a day 
procedure is something which is very simple and to know more about it please visit the website www.gurusiyagyoga.org so there is a science behind this whole uh, procedure as well there is a science behind uh, the pronunciation of the mantra as well so please do as directed as suggested by the guru because we however much we try to explain things by uh, our knowledge or our logics we will not be able to do the justice to to this whole divine process that how it happens and why do we exactly have to follow this and why not this and that so just do as directed and more we follow what has been said the more we understand about this whole thing about this whole process and about this whole journey and uh, manju was sharing about how uh, this uh, uh, how the guru siyag's uh, ashirwad or his blessing in the form of the mantra will awaken your kundalini energy and that kundalini energy is divine mother energy and it will induce automatic yogic movements so the common question that many practitioners uh, who are especially quite new into guru siyag yog so they they somehow compare themselves to others and they are wondering that why that person is having a lot of yogic kriyas and i'm not having or why you know that person is having a lot of experiences or other type of uh, movements or kriyas or or something or the other so so what makes what is this whole thing about that all of us experience different yogic movements and kriyas so maju would you like yeah so um i would like to uh, just say that uh, you know usually a conventional yoga practice uh, the practitioners are made to you know do particular asanas or some exercise and that does not take into account uh, you know individual physical mental or spiritual background and uh, it also kind of lacks the divine uh, element which uh, yoga talks about so although yoga is what we see is so different from what it actually is so doing this normal yogic uh, practices you know they do not get us permanent health benefits or it doesn't take us to a normal it doesn't take us to self realization uh, which is the real purpose of yoga and gurudev in his lectures has said that uh, you know by uh, doing this particular uh, chanting uh, our guru siya gave chanting and meditation it takes care of lot of things and uh, which is uh, you know in a person like my karma or my uh, past life karmas or my physical or my mental or my spiritual uh, element may not be same as any other sadhak who is uh, there you know so we all are different because of our karmas life burden of karmas and uh, the kundalini which is the feminine divine cosmic energy and it is only present omnipotent and omniscient now this energy knows everything about our past our present and our future in detail and that is why like as a mother knows everything that is why this shakti is called the mother of the universe so when since she knows whatever is required and whatever is good for each one of us so she induces only those yogic postures in an individual seeker which she feels is the best to cure any ailment or any uh, you know any disease or any addiction in a particular sadhak and that is the reason why yogic movements are induced by kundalini in 
practitioners and they are not the same they differ from every person to person and the best part is in our yogic text you know um the deep impressions or the seed habit patterns of our past life of the karmas of our present uh they shape the course of our present life and these actions also result in our physical in our mental and the spiritual disease now the the practitioner can be freed from uh, these you know threefold uh, afflictions by taking a uh, guru syag yog practicing guru syag yog sadhana which is the meditation and the chanting of mantra so guru syag uh, said that throughout the world only physical exercises are being performed in the name of yoga and when he visited united states of america he saw the same thing happening that only physical exercises were there but the main aim of yoga which is described as in the vedic philosophy is moksha which is the ultimate liberation from the life and birth cycle and as per the vedic philosophy it it doesn't speak of disease at all they don't have the word disease in the vedic philosophy uh in patanjali yoga philosophy there are 195 sutras and none of them mention anything like disease so the philosophy of the ways in which the imprints of past lives can be destroyed so uh the conventional yoga system or the modern medical treatment can only provide you know temporary relief for these chronic or terminal disease but one cannot get a lasting cure which only spiritual practice can offer and when the seeker's body and mind is purified by following the meditation and the round the clock chanting he becomes aware of the true purpose of his life and hence he is able to progress on the spiritual path under gurudev's guidance so yes i would say it's because we all have different uh, karma and different sanskaras so each of us will have uh, different kriyas and different asanas or some might not even have any kriyas happening when they are right. practicing uh, guru syag yog yeah yeah Varna, would you like to add something to it yeah so for uh, many people uh, who are uh, who are not yet doing so all these things may be simply out of uh, the possibility kind of thing so because you know this whole science is uh, is incredible and uh, and uh, since many many um, people world over know that uh, eastern philosophy and especially the indian uh, philosophy is the most ancient in the world and uh, and how we were so scientifically and we were advanced in every way and then uh, in the history we have all read the basics around that how we had to uh, go through this period wherein our country was uh, annexed multiple times and it was ruled and it was it it was uh, destroyed in terms of uh, its wealth whether it was the material wealth or this wealth of knowledge that we had so this science was perfectly documented in our scriptures and although we managed to preserve um, key scriptures but then many were destroyed so today when we are discussing this we are not able to tell you okay so here is the book and please read and this is the science behind it and 
and that's how you can prove it to yourself and and uh, when we are doing it we experience it then only we understand that that how this whole uh, uh, this whole experience of guru siyag yog is so powerful because this is not a one size fit all crude approach this is so different that it's 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 so it's so intelligent basically so those of you who think that what kind of automatic movements may happen and will it be embarrassing to have these automatic movements and all that so here we are referring to the divine mother the divine mother of the universe maybe many many universes who is so intelligent and intelligent is not the not the right word basically there is no right word for uh, these energies and forces and we are just trying to put our understanding to it so these forces are divine forces they are supremely intelligent so whatever you will you be going through in your meditation practice will be something that is that is best for you so whatever you are experiencing at every level is made for you it's best to you so we will just stick to the med- duration of meditation so while we are meditating yes some people experience movements or kriyas or whatever some people do not experience and as you have rightly explained that how we are different none of us match in our fingerprints so same way our yogic kriyas will be different each one of us needs different intervention and that divine mother is able to provide us in a effortless way so we in fact do not do have to do any effort around anything and maybe some of you may feel who are already doing it that uh, this is like magic so whatever you are uh, uh, having as an ailment should go away maybe in a week so please do not have these kind of expectations because of course your guru and divine mother they know that uh, you need to be healed and uh, you need to be healed at all levels but at the same time it's your faith that also plays a paramount role in this uh, healing so faith in the guru faith in the uh, path shown by the guru and then do not try to decide the time that okay so this must be accomplished you know my physical health must uh, be pink in 40 days or <laughs> six months so so it's because we are a we are complex system and our, most of our diseases do not even start at physical level so there is uh, you know there there are multiple ways to look at a particular situation so whatever situation we have in our life so we it is interlinked with so many things that are going on uh you know at our level of beings whether it is mental spiritual intellectual emotional being or whatever and similarly we are linked with others so we are we live in a ecosystem we are all connected so we are all connected so the the whole process when you will follow in guru siyag yoga believe that it is working for you because if you will question it every second day that you know i don't know something is happening maybe not maybe maybe that person is having maybe i'm not having maybe i'm not doing it rightly so there is no rocket science in in that so you can easily read on the website that okay so what is the process you can hear the mantra in gurudev's voice in this session and it's available on youtube as well you can correct your pronunciation 
वंस एंड फॉर ऑल ओके सो दिस इज द करेक्ट प्रोनाउंसिएशन एंड देन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द प्रोसेस देन देयर इज देयर इज देयर देयर इज नो नीड टू फील कंफ्यूज्ड एट ऑल बिकॉज़ यू नो व्हाट टू डू इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल प्रोसेस वेरी सिंपल मेथड जस्ट कीप ऑन डूइंग इट एंड डू नॉट कंपेयर योरसेल्फ विद एवरी एनीवन और एवरीवन and believe that uh, you are also the child of the divine mother you are also child of uh, gurudev and you know for them every child is very important or equally important and loved so somebody who you think is progressing very fast is not not the favorite amongst the group there is nothing like that so you we can't even know that somebody who is running fast is the progress really fast or not because we do not know enough about what is going on with regards to this process which is taking us towards liberation towards that nirvana and moksha and although that's another story that a lot of people they they think that i am not looking for liberation i am looking <laughs> i am looking forward to live and enjoy life because the, nobody uh, i have met so far uh, has ever said to me that they want to get liberated and or, or and they you know they are they are waiting for moksha so if given a choice suppose uh, gurudev says okay today i am liberating you are you ready so i would say no i am not ready yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have to uh, experience this world and that is yeah. why yeah yes so i would say no 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 please give me another um, at least 30 more years <laughs> so look at the demands we have so i will say let yeah. me raise my children let me you know set them let me see what they do in life and uh, mm-hmm. and at the same time i don't i know that you know that most of the people can stay sane and f- quite fit till the time they are 60 65 so i would be very shrewd in asking that okay so moksha is very attractive but i don't want it now maybe after 30 <laughs> years i will be <laughs> <laughs> so we understand all these aspects of uh, being a human being so even though uh, we are practicing guru siyag yoga for past quite a few years and we understand that initially uh, when when we tell people about guru siyag yoga so they they are so some some definitely uh, some are very receptive and they are open and all that so they listen and they start doing it also and they when they see some changes they continue but then there are many who are who are like that that why guru siyag yoga and uh, and why this mantra and why uh, why not my other guru which is very you know popular and in different ways and all that stuff so we are discussing uh, that how guru siyag yoga is a very unique practice so if you will start doing guru siyag yoga if you will start understanding the science behind it and all that then you will understand that guru siyag yoga uh, gives you from point a to z so there are no loose connects here there are no uh, detours here and there is no complication here there is no agency which which is charging some money for uh, any bit of Uh, anything related to guru siyag yoga so or there is nothing that can't be answered there is no question of life that can't be answered through the philosophy of guru siyag yoga so of uh, most of our questions are around uh, suffering and why me kind of questions so when we start practicing guru siyag yoga so whatever questions whatever suffering whatever mental state emotional state we are in divine mother kundalini starts transforming us at all levels starts healing us at all levels so all of our all of the questions that we have start they, they we seek answers 
and we get answers from inside only so all that starts happening and it's very hard to share all these things in uh, in words so i'm sure some of you will understand so manju manju what do you have to say about that yeah so i'm i was as you were saying all this i was just going through my own journey and uh, you know i have like we have discussed this earlier uh, in our earlier episodes that uh the thing which made us come in this practice was the simplicity you yeah. know gurudev is so simple to look at and uh but the the process was so simple 15 minutes meditation i was like okay i can do 15 minutes that's not too much and earlier i was doing meditation for an hour or so and yeah. uh you know there were a lot of uh, the expectations from sadhaks and there were a lot of uh, you know this kind of expectation if you're not doing it means you are not good enough so with that guilt of doing you know there's somebody uh, there was something behind always lingering around that you have to do you know they are own feeling otherwise you know something it's like not good so here it is just 15 minutes in the morning 15 minutes in the evening so simple and you're not answerable or accountable to anyone there's no i mean it's just a direct relationship between you and gurudev and yes it was so simple and looking at gurudev i mean i was like so simple and and that what uh, resonated with me and i was like no questions asked just there and it and such a simple procedure allowed uh, and i was just fitted into my regime and uh, that's it and the best part is yeah one or two more things uh, takeaways i would say is that just do not compare i think also whatever anyone is receiving is the measure of surrender you are into you know how much are you surrender to gurudev how much of doubts are you having so this also kind of uh, uh, ascertains you know what kind of uh, transformational journey you are going to go through so i would just say just get into it transformations would happen just believe just surrender do not compare and there, as uh, gorama said why me i one should just say i mean yes i am there gurudev yes it's good that uh, you chose me you know for whatever because it's a universal energy which knows how much we can take how much of transformation also we can receive you know at times we are not uh, we are not ready for it and kundalini shakti knows that how much we will be able to imbibe and how much we will be able to you know assimilate and move forward so no questions asked there are no um, you know kind of doubts in our gurudev it's 100% surrender and it has to be done like it's round the clock if we are doing those simple practices everything will happen on its own it's so simple so easy to understand and yet it's not i mean we can't even understand that much that's the beauty you know and uh, yeah that's pretty much which i would like to say and uh, some people go through yogic kriyas and they may not stop for certain reason so you just need to press a thumb here and uh, kind of just uh, request to gurudev that they should uh, you know kindly stop this kriya because uh, at times you know it might just in some very very rare cases then you can just do that and uh, just leave it to kundalini shakti i mean she will take care of it we just have to have that faith and that surrender yes. yeah absolutely and when you said surrender so yes so uh, those of you who are wondering that you are not able to surrender so the point is that you will understand it slowly and slowly you may not be 
living it fully right now with regards to surrendering to a spiritual master and in fact our guru dev is god himself so all these things may not come naturally to you and it didn't come naturally to us either but what we experienced is that uh, we uh, evolve in this practice we evolve every day each day and this whole practice will make you go inwards so this process wherein we have to close our eyes and imagine gurudev on our third eye so this 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 very thing uh, gurudev has shared in his talks that how every other opening in the body leads you outwards leads you outwards it's only this opening our third eye which takes you inwards so when you start to practice guru siyag yoga and when you place guru dev on your third eye so somewhere when you will start slowly and slowly move inwards so you will start finding you will start finding that spiritual connect that needs to happen with the universal power in this case our gurudev you will you will start receiving messages or intuitions or whatever you may say guidance from inside so have faith in the practice do as has been suggested by gurudev and slowly and slowly notice acclimatize yourself become receptive of this fact that now you are under the uh, discipleship of a spiritual master your life is bound to change without any iota of doubt your life is bound to change and start noticing those changes so those changes would range from you feeling differently you thinking differently it's not only about just experiencing yogic kriyas in the uh, during the meditation time it's also about uh, really experiencing noticing becoming attuned to the changes small small changes that starts happening inside you so somewhere what perhaps uh, is needed here is to really actively become a active spiritual practitioner not a passive one that okay i have done mantra jap okay i have done meditation but nothing great happened so <laughs> so with this kind of attitude actually nothing great will happen because it's not that that no- nothing is happening is just that that somewhere you are not ready to refine yourself at your level of perception at the, and at the level of the reception as well so when you are following a true master and you are chanting the mantra man, that mantra is full of power a, a, a simple one minute glance at our gurudev touching his feet through his photograph everything is so full of energy so full of energy but if you think that you suddenly must feel some current running in your system <laughs> so that doesn't happen because divine mother kundalini knows that if that that will happen to you you will freak out you will freak out you will not be able to sustain such thing so whatever happens under the discipleship of a true spiritual masters will happen in a way which which will not be crude so these will be powerful changes subtle changes for which you really have to stay attuned and you have to also play your part of being accepting recept being receptive and be ready for the transformation you can't remain stuck so you will be getting so much of guidance to evolve yourself to evolve your crude patterns of thinking and behaving and of course it's not uh, it, it is not easy to stop behaving the way we have been behaving all our life so you will be challenged 
to incorporate all the spiritual wisdom that you will be getting on this path. So many are times incorporating that spiritual wisdom is difficult. And some people might choose to say that, uh, oh, here you really need to do so much of work. What's the point? I was thinking that all my diseases would get healed and everything. So nothing of that sort is happening. But uh, and, you know, I, I can't change these things about myself. So when you are doing any great practice, and this one is the greatest for that matter, everything about you will change. So start with this thought in mind. If you think that, you know, everything, only those things will change, which you want to change, that, okay, my skin tone must become better. <laughs> Maybe my family members must get some wisdom or I must get some promotion at my work and I must get noticed that how intelligent, good and whatever I am. And somebody who's self-pitying might say that, okay, maybe world should notice that I'm, you know, I'm having the toughest, toughest, toughest time in the world and no one knows my situation and all that. So whichever place in life you are in, you will be challenged to evolve from there to a better place. And that exactly is not a very comfortable thing. But that is the best thing that will be happening. So this process work, this method works, our Gurudev works, all the time he works, I would say. And once you hear the mantra, once you start putting your efforts with sincerity, your life is bound to change. So that is it for today. So yeah. how about... Uh, playing the mantra yeah. in Gurudev's voice and then we all will meditate for uh, 15 minutes. Yeah. And while you're putting up Gurudev's uh, video, uh, I'll just yeah, go yeah. through the process. Uh, yeah. Just a second. I'll just put you. Yeah. 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 You just have to sit in a comfortable position uh, with some space around and you should have had your food uh, I mean, the gap between your food and your meditation should be at least two to three hours. And just sit in a comfortable position and then look at Gurudev's picture and then just close your eyes. And we'll be displaying uh, the video in which you will listen to the mantra, which you have to correctly uh, chant. So you just look at Gurudev's picture for a minute. And with a lot of reverence, look at him on the third eye and close your eyes and pray to Gurudev to allow you to meditate for 15 minutes. And while meditating, keep the picture of Gurudev on the third eye and try to get his picture. At times it happens, you know, it just goes away, just get it back and keep on chanting the mantra without, uh, you know, uh, moving your lips or your tongue. It has to be very silent chanting inside. Yeah. Yoga means yoga means the union of the soul with God or the universal consciousness force. What are the benefits of Siddhi Yoga? Siddhi Yoga heals, cures or frees the body from any physical illness adds various forms of cancers, diabetes, arthritis, asthma, and even genetic diseases like hemophilia. In the case of diseases such as AIDS, which attacks the entire body, the patient may experience internal kriyas like sensation or heat, electricity, or tingling. According to Siddhi Yoga philosophy, the divine power awakened by the an enlightened Guru gets transmitted through his blissful voice to the listeners, irrespective of language spoken by the Guru. This divine power transmissions occurs smoothly and remains unaffected by the language being used. Regular practice of Siddhi Yoga strengthens the immune system. The Kundalini acts as a protective shield of the immune system and wards off the 
onslaught or recurrence of any disease impact of kundalini awakening the kundalini makes the practitioner perform kriyas that are specific to his needs with this cleaning the practitioner is cured of all kinds of chronic and even terminal disease such as hiv aids cancer arthritis etc and genetic disorder like hemophilia mental application to are completely cured and stress is completely relieved clean krishna clean 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 clean krishna clean
जय गुरुदेव प्लीज ओपन योर आईज एंड थैंक्स टू ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर वॉचिंग बींग विद अस इन दिस एपिसोड एंड सी यू नेक्स्ट वेडनेसडे जय गुरुदेव मंजू एंड episode yeah. is surrendered to gurudev and yeah. dada gurudev absolutely yeah. jai gurudev